everybody doing tonight? <laughs> Welcome to the show, folks. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. We've got an incredible, incredible show for you tonight. Listen to this. Did you know that the average supermarket... You with me, right? Yes. The average supermarket has more than 4,000 products that contain corn. Really, if you think about it like that, I mean, there's not only just fresh corn, popcorn, and cornmeal, but they use it in corn syrup sweeteners from soda to marshmallows. Aren't you excited about that, Jay? <laughs> Jay, are you as excited as I am about it? <clears throat> oh, by the way, we got Doc Gibbs in the Ever Live Band tonight. So guess what? That's exactly what we're going to do tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about corn, show you some different corn dishes. First one. I've been doing this dish for a while. I haven't done it in a while, but I've, you know what I mean. I'm going to show you a really fun popcorn firecracker shrimp dish. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, in Italy, cornmeal is called polenta. And we're going to make one tonight with uh, blue cheese, so they would use a little gorgonzola. Oh, I know. To die for. I know. Blue cheese and some walnuts. It's got like this caramelized onion. Yeah, you'll see. And then I'm going to show you a simple crust with a corn salad. I'm going to show you a cornmeal crust. We're going to cornmeal crust some scallops. Fantastic. And then an old-fashioned corn pie. Oh, boy. It's going to be a big one, Hilda. We're kicking up corn tonight, right here on Emerald Live. Thank you. How are you? Good. See, you guys thought these were the cheap seats, huh? <laughs> Welcome to the show. Well, I'm going to start showing you a few uh, members of the corn. It's amazing the amount of products that have corn or some type of corn in it. This is, um, you ever hear of this? This is, this is really dry pozzoli. This is when it's uh, in whole stage. And this is used a lot for southwestern dishes and et cetera. You, should you get that, or is that you, Doc? I, I, I think it was uh, somebody about some more instruments. Jay? Yeah, Jay. On the loose. Yeah, where is he? He's oh, right over here, he yeah. in an eye distance here. This is Homni, which is another, I love to cook this thing down. I do a stew with this, uh, with duck. You could do it with chicken, you cook it down, use it Homni like that. Oh, it's fantastic. Different popcorns I'm going to show you. Of course, we got polenta and cornmeal and white cornmeal, masarina. And uh, I'm going to show you this dish that we'll have a lot of fun with. Watch this. I got a simple skillet. I'm going to turn on about medium high. I've got some chili oil. Or you can make your own chili oil. Okay? You could just put some crushed pepper. If you don't have chili oil with olive oil, it'll work just fine. I'm going to do it with this black popcorn, and then I have Gulf shrimp. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> now, here's what we're going to do first. We're going to take the shrimp that have been peeled. We're going to make them happy with a little bit of this chili oil, okay? <laughs> little essence. A little more essence like that. All right, now, you'll see what I mean here in a second. We're going to start with some chili oil, but before I do that, here's what I do. I kind of take this off the stove first, and then I'm going to take the shrimp and kind of just put them along 
the outer side of the pan. <laughs> Nothing like a little shrimp and chili oil there, Doc. So, Abby, you got any chili oil music? I happen to have it right here. Okay, that's good. <laughs> See, you got to get them really close together like this. They're getting all nice and happy in there. And then the dish is really easy. It's kind of fun to do with the kids, this dish, too. All right, so we got the shrimp in there now. <laughs> One more. Okay, so now we put that right on the skillet like that, okay? See if it starts getting hot. Then we're going to put a little bit more chili oil in the center, a little drizzle like that. <laughs> See, it's getting hot like that now. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put the popcorn in the center like that. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> then we're going to take a little foil and we're kind of making one of them jiffy things. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, it's like a homemade jiffy thing. Okay, so let's make sure it's covered. It's covered. So you can do this too. Okay, let's see if what we got here, Doc. Just kind of give it a little shake. You know that that song, you know? Starts. Jiffy Pop. Yeah. Exactly. All right, look, I'm gonna we're gonna let this sort of you know, poof up a little bit here. We're gonna rock out with Doc Gibbs. Stick around, we'll be right back. Come on, boys! Welcome back, folks. Emma Lagasse here. We're kicking up corn and cornmeal tonight. Listen. It's popping. If it doesn't do that, a couple of three minutes, don't be alarmed. What we did is we took most of the shrimp out, still nice and hot and warm. We took them out to give the corn just a little bit more room and heat. Also, the moisture from the shrimp will slow the process down. See how we're doing in here. <laughs> All right. So when it comes out, folks, if you want it a little bit more spicy, you can just add a little more chili oil or just you want to be sure to season it with a little salt and there you have it a little popcorn firecracker shrimp see that oh yeah baby hopefully it's still it's done popping <laughs> so now, this next dish, it's pretty cool, huh? Where do you taste it? Huh. Now, this next dish that we're going to do is with another type of corn called polenta, one of my favorites. Show you how this is done. First, we're going to start with a little olive oil in a little sauce pot. Mm -hmm. about medium-high heat. We're going to add a little bit of 
onion first to start with, and then a little bit of garlic, about 40, 50 cloves, you know, just. <laughs> what we're gonna do is just get the flavor from the onion and the garlic going. A little fresh ground pepper. You don't wanna burn the garlic. See right at this stage right here? It's getting nice and golden. Get all the flavors extracted. That's good. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add some fresh basil just for about 10 seconds. And then we're gonna start making the polenta. I've got some scalded milk here. So that will also... Beautiful. Now we'll stir that, let that flavor get going for a second. Meanwhile, while that's happening, now look, folks, see how this is starting to rise already? If you like a mad, like a, a neighbor, <laughs> you know, maybe your spouse, you like want to decorate the kitchen or maybe the house, just leave the milk on. No, I'm joking. It's very, very dangerous, folks, when you're boiling milk or cream that boils over on the stove, you got trouble. I hope you know a couple of firemen like I do. Now, while that's going on, let me tell you, we're going to take a little butter. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> Trying to work with the farmers. And what we're going to do is we're going to start caramelizing in this butter some sliced onions, peeled, halved, and sliced medium to medium high heat and we're going to just start getting them nice and caramel color they'll get nice and sweet and i'll show you where we're going to go with this meanwhile turn down the stove you see you don't have to cook everything on high just turn it down this is like on medium low right now see <laughs> medium low you should try using these sometimes they're much more than decorative purposes Now we're gonna add the cornmeal for the polenta and start stirring it in. Now, a lot of people, this is quick corn, so it's not gonna take a while for this polenta, but you gotta stir it. Here's what people freak out about making polenta. One, they didn't add enough liquid, and so you can basically stand a house up in there. <laughs> Don't panic. Just add a little bit more liquid. Two. They're worried that it's getting so thick, like this is right here, so fast. Again, don't panic. Just add a little bit more milk or add a little bit of water. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to start softening this up, just like this. Okay? All right, so I'm going to keep stirring the polenta, caramelizing the onions. When we come back, I'm going to show you what it's going to look like. Stick around. Doc Gibbs, everybody. one of these earthware things, lightly olive oiled it, and have that ready to go. You can see right here the polenta. I've been cooking it, stirring it. I've even been adding a little bit of water. It's pretty thick now. So at this point, you want to taste it 
Just like grits, you know, you want to make sure that it doesn't taste like a grit. That's why people don't like to eat them. So they taste like grit. <laughs> Same thing with polenta. You got to cook it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some blue cheese or some gorgonzola would work too. Just crumble it up in there like that. Okay, if you want more, we'll add a little bit more in there. Okay. You could add goat cheese. You could add whatever you like, white cheddar. I'm just going for this wonderful blue cheese polenta effect right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just take it now and put it inside of that wonderful oil that we, earthware thing that we have. Press it. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> now, what happens is this. You put this in the ice box. Everything all right over there, ladies? Excuse me? It's spicy. So right now you're praying that you had water. We'll get you some of that. The shrimp was spicy or the popcorn was? It's from the chili oil. Yeah. I'm observant, Teddy. <laughs> I'm right in the middle of polenta, and I see the lady there. She's rolling oh, over in the we, back. She's, we have the to poor get her some thing. water. Somebody get her some water, we please. We have to get her some water. There's only 85 people on the Emerald Live crew. <laughs> Can somebody get her some water? That's where I come in, ma'am. Look. I feel like Monty Hall over here. You're welcome. There you go, honey. All right. She took one sip, and it was a big bust of steam that went <laughs> back to the polenta. So I, uh, you let this cool. Actually, you can do it a day or two before. You put it in the ice box. We got the caramelized onions, OK? We now have the polenta. I have mine in the ice box. Here's the next step of what we do here. Talk about a great little appetizer. After it cools, what I do is I get a little knife. And it can, this is also can be wonderful for a little, not only a little hors d'oeuvre, but also you could use this for a little starch on the plate. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these polenta squares. You see? Now what you do is this. Oh, boy. I'm sorry. He came with the show. We're going to take a little olive oil. And then what we're going to do, folks, this is what they call wonder flour, OK? It's a little more granule. I find it does. We dredge the polenta in this wonder flour. And then we're going to start sauteing it in olive oil. Dredge that right in the old wonder flour. And we're going to start cooking that in the olive oil. You guys are with me so far? All right. The other thing sometimes that I do is I'll take these polenta cakes and I'll also use them for breakfast. You can do the same thing or you can do a more traditional breading with them. And then you can just pan fry them and you can put a little poached egg on them. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> little tasso hollandaise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, here's the deal what we're going to do so I can show you this because Rhoda's signaling me back there. Yeah, yeah. Now what you can do, folks, real simple, you get them nice and golden brown like this. And then what I like to do, oh, I'll show you. Let me do a little plate for you. I like to take one of the polenta cakes
and season that polenta cake with a little bit of salt and pepper. Then I take extra virgin olive oil with a little bit of arugula. <laughs> And just do a little bit. You know, if the tomatoes are really nice, the other thing that you can do instead of the extra virgin is you can use a little truffle oil, which would be great. So put a little arugula salad like that. If you had a little slice of tomato, some more of that crumbled blue cheese. And look at that. That's a simple, simple, simple little appetizer right there, folks, with a little polenta cake, okay? And arugula salad. Wow. The other thing also that I do is those beautiful caramelized onions, you just put a nice little cluster like that because you got the sweetness from the caramelized onion and that blue cheese in there. It's absolutely fantastic. So there you have it, folks, okay? Fresh corn right off the cob. There's nothing more sweet and silky. And uh, luckily, uh, pretty much around the year now, we're lucky to get corn from various parts of the country. But of course, there's nothing better than summer, late summer corn. I'm going to start sauteing this in a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper, because I'm going to make an incredible relish. And I'll show you what it looks like when we come back. Stick around. We'll be right back. Emily Gossi here. You should be with us. We're kicking up corn and cornmeal tonight. We just did a wonderful blue cheese polenta, caramelized onions, and I started this fresh corn because now what I want to do is see how it's got that beautiful color, okay? It only took about maybe four or five minutes. I'm also bringing out not only the sugar but some of the starch in there as well. And now what I'm going to do, while it's warm, while it's still warm, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to add a few cloves of garlic in here. But while it's warm, I'm going to add a little bit of salt. Now, we added some earlier when we were cooking it. And I'm going to add some cumin and a tiny bit allspice. And what I'm going to do is I want to mix this because, you see, when the corn is warm like this, it's vulnerable. It's just waiting to be seasoned. So that's what we're doing right now. We're just going to kind of let it get those flavors in there. And while that's doing that, then we're going to add some diced tomato. And if they're kind of juicy, that's fine too. A little red onion and some fresh parsley. Now, for the acidity of this, we could either use a vinegar or we could use a combination. See, doesn't that look good? Now, I have a little bit of white wine vinegar here. We could use that or a combination. So what we're going to do is we'll use a few drops of white wine vinegar. And then what we'll do is we'll take a lemon and we'll do a few drops of that. See, so you just kind of loosen it up, and this is when you just fork a lemon. See? Get a fork like that, and then you can just squeeze it like this, and you can just get the drops that you need and no seeds. Okay? So we'll do a few of that. Then the good thing is when you fork a lemon like this, if you don't use it all, you just take the fork out, put it back in the ice box. Okay? Or you can play games with your neighbors, you know. <laughs> 
Now, so we've done that. And then I thought one more thing what we would do is add a little bit of avocado in this. So I look for an avocado that's ripe, okay? And then, at least for me, what I do is I just sort of cut the avocado in half with a paring knife. Then I have the seed pot here, so I just kind of usually just try to take it out like that. Oh, yeah, people, we get so many of that www.foodnetwork.com help. I'm in avocado land. It's amazing. I just say, look, take it easy. Here's what I do. I don't go all the way through. I just take a paring knife and I go down to the skin. Because this is where people have a lot of trouble. And then I go the other way. And I just go right down to that skin. And you'll feel, if, you, if your paring knife is sharp, you'll feel that you're going, you don't want to go through the skin. You see, let me show you that again. I just kind of make slices right to the, to the skin. Now, if I wanted slices, I would just stop right here, and I'd have my slices. But I would, wanted to add some diced avocado to this. So that's why I've got the knife going like this. And then at that point now, you just go in with the spoon. I usually make one little turn, one little circle like this first. And then basically, look at that. You just take your avocado right out of there like that little diced avocado. So I go right around. Simple way of doing it. All right, now, got a little avocado in there. We'll let this relish just kind of... It's horrible. It's very abusive. So now we've got this corn and avocado relish. We're going to let that sit. Let me take you to the next cornmeal land. First thing I'm going to do is, this is some cornmeal. Another great corn product is called Masarina. They make tamales, you know, tortillas with. It's fantastic. I love a little bit of that in the flour, frying things like calamari, certain pieces of seafood, little catfish. Fantastic. What we'll do is we'll add a little bit of flour into that. So we sort of have a combo. And then I've got a couple of eggs here. And we're going to beat them up, add a little bit of water. Or you could add a little bit of milk to make an egg wash. Now, I don't know where you get your flour, whether it's regular or corn. But where I get mine, it don't come seasoned. So what we're going to do is add a little essence in here. Okay? Yeah. Same thing. I don't know where the heck these chickens came from, but I can tell you they're not seasoned. So, I'll add a little seasoning in there as well. Now I'm ready. So I got a dry and a wet corn, sort of a good corn flour. Now here's what I like to do. We'll take a little bit of, you can either use a deep fryer if you like, a little oil right there. Here's the key. See, I got some beautiful scallops, okay? And they smell like the sea. They smell beautiful. If you get a piece of fish or a scallop and it, like, smells, I'd leave it there at the store. Go to the meat section. Try a big pork chop instead. <laughs> now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take these and we're going to dredge them, a few of these in the flour like this first. Okay? Now, if you want to kick them up a few notches, we can season them with the essence too. Okay? So now we got them and we're going to put them inside the egg. So let's do a few of these real quick. I got time there, Rhoda? Thank you, Rhoda. So good to me. She's so good. I think she's loving scallops these days. Or maybe tonight. You can have one, Rhoda. All right, so now we get them from the seasoned flour into the egg wash. Yeah, your hands are going to be a little. Then we're going to put them 
in there, and then we're going to put them right back inside of the, the flour. You guys with me there? Yeah. What happens is this makes such the most incredible crust like you won't believe. So we got the crust in there now. Now we're going to just sort of... <laughs> Now, oh, look at this. This is beautiful. See, folks, now what we're going to do, and you can do it up to this point. You can just put the whole thing right in the icebox if you want. Waiting for the kids, waiting for the family, waiting for the friends, and then you're, like, ready to start cooking. You're ready to start. Then you can just turn the burner on. You don't have to get it super hot. Shake it off, and we'll get them right in the skillet. Actually, it's not hot enough. Hey, that happens. That's what happens when you really cook. <laughs> when we come back, I'm going to show you what they look like. Stick around. We'll be right back. Stop kids. on you if you're just joining us. Uh, we are kicking corn up tonight and the cornmeal crusted scallops are in the skillet right now. Have a little combination of uh, pomace and olive oil. You can see how they get. And one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they kind of do this sort of preparation, whether they're going to do it to a fillet of fish or scallops is Again, they got the heat on so high that they instantly, quickly get a lot of color, but the inside of the meat is not cooked or the fish is not cooked. So if you use the dial and kind of stay in the range of that medium, medium plus, then you can sort of adjust that and get the right crust. Now, if it's too thick, then my suggestion to you is once you get the brownness on both sides that you want is just finish it in the oven is another thing that you can do. Put the oven on about 300 degrees. Our oven's on 350 degrees right now because I've got a, uh, a treat coming up for you. But first, let's sort of finish the dish. So I got this incredible corn with the avocado relish. Sounds good to me. <laughs> and what we're going to do is this. We're just going to take a few scallops. That works for me. Nice appetizer portion. <laughs> and then what we'll do is we're going to add the scallops on the plate. That nice cornmeal crust. And then we're going to take some of that corn avocado relish right in the center like this. Okay. And then I've got a little bit of cilantro leaves. I'm going to put a little cluster there and just kind of put some little clusters like this here. And then I have some beautiful popcorn shoots since it's a corn show. <laughs> so these are popcorn shoots right here. They taste just like popcorn. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of these and I just sort of drizzle it like this with olive oil. A little bit of salt. And then we'll just use this as a little garnish like this. It's the popcorn shoots like that. 
There you have it, okay, folks? Little scallops, cornmeal crusted. Did Michael get a shot of that buck? Now, take these out so they don't burn. Beautiful, nice color. Scallops like medium, mid rare to medium, the way they should be eaten. There you have it. All right. This old fashioned corn pudding. I used to do this like a lot of years ago, and I'm sure it came from someone's grandma and someone's grandma and someone's grandma. But I was kind of looking through some old notes and found this, and the culinary team and I, we decided to uh, bring it back for you. So I got a little melted butter that I'm melting. More importantly, you want to just don't want to take the corn off the cob and then scrape the cob with all that sugar's in there. But one of the ways that I found is actually to grate the corn. So you use the big grate box like this, and you just kind of get the corn. And what happens is that you're not only just getting all the sugar and sweetness out, but you sort of see what it's doing? It's getting all that texture, that corn texture like that. So you do a few cobs of this. So this is the messy pot. Wow. <laughs> so I think you get the, get the program here. So you get all that nice corn out into a bowl. Just keep, just keep scraping it until you get it down to the cob. But you see all the liquid that's coming out of that? Now, you take that, and what we're going to do now is we're going to take a couple of eggs, whisk them up, a little bit of heavy cream. Yeah. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to add a little bit of cinnamon num, 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 in here, some orange peel, sugar, a little bit of butter, melted, I know, it's a sauce pot for a four-year-old. Now. Then what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to start working that corn into this. <laughs> Must have been a fisherman. I used to fish with cream corn. You should try it sometimes. You ever hear that, Doc? No, I haven't. Uh, yeah, that's a southern thing. Uh, no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometime, Doc, I'll take you out there for Marlin. Okay. We're using whale for bait. Ooh. Just kidding. <laughs> so anyhow, now we've got this filling, and what we've done is I've used these little ramekins, which you know, you guys have these. I can see the guilty ones in the audience of the last time that they used them. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm going to buy these, Johnny. This is going to be great for the souffles I'm going to make. <laughs> Three years goes by. Hey, Suze, where's the souffles, babe? I'm going to start filling these up. 350's the oven, and I'll show you what they look like when we come back. Stick around. Rock this. One of the things, one of the things that you want to do, at least for me, that works, I like these dry cranberries. They have dry blueberries, too. Right at the end, I just fold those in, kind of make it nice and fally, holiday. Then you fill up about three-quarters of the way the cups, okay? Bake it at 350 for about 45 minutes. When they come out, let them cool a little bit. You can't just take them, unless you're going to eat them in the casserole, you can't just take them from the stove right to the plate. I took 
maple syrup, cranberries, orange juice, and a little bit of orange peel, put it in a pot, cooked it down and make a syrup. And then I have this sort of syrup right now. See, like a little cranberry syrup? And then when these cool, I take one of these out like this. You can invert it like this, or like I said, eat it right in the, and I just kind of bam, 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 just a little bam like that. <laughs> Cut little walnuts. And there you have it, you see that? A little Indian pudding, old fashioned style. Oh, what a night. I'm Emma Lugosi, I wanna thank you all for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody.